want to talk today about the astral. What does that mean? <laughs> I never found uh, a reasonable, uh, believable, <laughs> um, definitive explanation of what the astral realm is. So I want to help clarify a little bit, give uh, an experiential uh, explanation of what the astral realm is. Now, we call it a realm, but it's really a, um, just a different perspective, a different sort of perception. Wherever there is a physical thing, there is an astral thing and a mental thing. So we have a physical, an astral, and a mental body. For a thing to have a physical existence, the mental impetus must pass through an astral body, essentially, in order to take physical form. It's the only way uh, the mental fits into the physical, is through this astral medium. And it's a transitional phase of existence. So, we all have an astral body, just like we all have a physical body, and a mental body, or mind. Okay, so mind enters flesh through an astral body. And in my um, work, um, uh, Love Letter to a Dying World, I call the astral body the sentient self. This is the self that senses. When we touch something, for example, for sensing, electrical impulses pass into the brain and we have an initial emotional response. It is our emotional response that gives us the interpretation of those electrical impulses and we feel the sensation. It's that process of interpreting the physical you know, passage of, of electrical impulses to the brain that is the astral body. It's with the astral body that we actually sense things. When we look through our eyes, you know, this is just uh, photons hitting the nerves in our eyes, passing that information to our brain. It's not vision. You know, it makes no sense of it till it reaches the brain and here our astral body develops an immediate emotional response to what we are seeing and it takes it makes sense to us because of our emotional responses so our astral body is our emotional body all of our emotions are our astral body no matter how minor or how uh, you know large those emotions are they're all our astral body this is what our astral body does. It, it establishes for us, for the mind, the relative significance of everything that we perceive. Okay? And that is an emotional valuation that we make on everything instantly. You know, it, it, it comes with perception essentially it's instantaneous as soon as those electrical impulses hit the brain there's the astral reaction that forms our perception how we perceive what we perceive okay so that's our astral body and everything that exists every physical thing that exists has an astral body that serves the same function of establishing the relative significance of everything that the object, thing, whatever perceives, <clears throat> experiences. That isn't necessarily an emotional reaction in most things, but it is the same response. It is the same medium through which the uh, mental being exists in its physical body and interacts 
with the physical world. This is how we integrate, how we react, how we participate in the physical world is through the astral body. Okay? Now, when looking around, so astral wandering is sort of a unique way of experiencing the astral realm. It's the astral realm exists only because there is a physical realm and it mirrors the physical realm. It's the energetic core of everything that is physical. So when we're astral wandering, what we are seeing, we're seeing just the same way as we do with physical eyes because it's our astral that does the perceiving through the physical eye. So it's the same type of perceiving, so we might as well call it sight. And we see physical things, but we see them with their energy. Everything buzzes, <clears throat> uh, radiates energy, energy that communicates. It's communicating essential meaning through the form that we are perceiving. And so it's just very alive and very present in the astral realm, or when we are astral wandering. Uh, it, this is just shifting our perspective slightly, so that instead of seeing just the physical thing, which is very dead in comparison, is very drab in comparison to seeing it in the astral, where the energy of its, its own significance, relative significance, uh, just shines forth. Um, now, <clears throat> astral wandering, we can see different aspects of the astral world. We can see the, the physical objects in their astral form, and they look just like their physical form, except they have this extra radiation of information and yeah okay has extra radiation um but there's also since this is the realm of relative significance and we are perceiving the the expectations that we have in that process of perceiving, because remember, this is very subjective. Perception is very personal. My perception of the chair might be entirely different than your perception of the chair, um, because I see it differently. I see it as it's uh, relevant to me. Um, <clears throat> it's significant to me in very specific ways. So, I can see the significance, and depending on how many of those filters we engage in our perception, the astral can be quite fantastical, especially out in nature. Um, it can be, well, like being on acid or on mushrooms or on some psychedelic trip. That is the astral realm. That is us in the astral realm. That's us personalizing the astral realm. So it's not an objective perception of the astral realm particularly. The, the perception of the astral realm in which we see physical objects pretty much as they are in the physical world is a more objective perception of the astral realm. So, uh, you'll have some really wild descriptions of what people experience in the astral realm. And that's not necessarily an objective experience. It's more a subjective. They're, they're adding themselves, their own psyche, to their perceptions in the astral. Okay? So, for me, um, it's only you know, really bizarre and outstanding when I want it to be. So our primary encounter experience of the astral realm as human beings is our motions, 
our personality and our emotions. So uh, we learn in the character transformation work how malleable all of that is, how malleable our emotions are, and how malleable the uh, personality is. And that's, the astral is very malleable because it's an interaction. It's an interaction between the mental and the physical. And in that interaction is personal. It's all up to us how we want to perceive it, how we expect to perceive it. So going into an experience of the directly, and a direct experience of the astral realm, um, you have to really uh, be aware of how you are personalizing your perceptions. This is why astral wandering is way at the end of step eight, you know, or step nine, rather, in initiation into hermetics. Because by then, you have gotten to know yourself well enough that you are able to set aside those biases and preconceptions, to set aside the filters we all naturally impose in our perceptions, the personalization of our perceptions. And then you can get to a really, truly objective perception in the astral realm, astral wandering. Then, then and only then, becomes a truly objective experience instead of just a purely object, a, a, a subjective experience filled with fantasy and self-delusion. So, the problem with most of the descriptions of the astral realm is that they are just that. They're um, superimpositions of the individual psyche upon the astral realm. And the astral realm just sucks it up, like, oh yeah, let's play with that, and empowers it. So, there is a great danger in astral wandering of self-delusion that can really set you back. It can really set you back. And so, it's to be avoided. Um, go for the objective perception, because that's the most informative. It truly is. When you can look at an object in the astral, with your astral eyes, you can see the objective significance of that object in the universe. It speaks to you of its essential meaning in that exchange. And that is an exchange, okay? And you can communicate with anything on that level of essential meaning, this exchange, this personalization of essential meaning back and forth. Okay, so you really get in touch with the objective universe, not your fantasy of what the universe is. Then there is the um, part of the astral realm that is inhabited by the beings of the elements and the beings of the zone girdling the earth. Now, I've said that every astral thing is, uh, you know, a transitional, uh, it has a physical corollary, and so it is, if it is astral, it is also physical and mental, and these beings of the elements and the zone girdling of the earth all have their physical corollaries. But the beings of the elements, for example, are spread homogeneously throughout the universe. So, they have physical corollaries in everything. And the zone girdling the earth, throughout the earth, these beings exist in the fabric of the earth, that is their physical bodies, but when we visit them, we're visiting their astral bodies alone. And it's here in the astral realm, 
that we can we can perceive them as discrete beings um, instead of seeing them spread throughout the planet or spread you know throughout physical existence they exist as discrete beings only when we travel to them with the expectation of meeting them in this form remember everything in the astral is an interaction it's you know back and forth between me and you and me and you so i'm always interpreting we're always interpreting in the astral realm and that's the level of the astral that we meet them in where it's basically our own construct as a means of communicating with these aspects of existence. We personalize them and we make beings out of them and we meet them uh, in a place of common ground, as it were. It's all our own creation. And I mean, it's really important that that is understood any time we're encountering an astral being, one of the elemental beings, or one, someone from the uh, uh, the zone girdling the earth, um, or various uh, ghosts that we might encounter, various spirits, who uh, with that uh, connection. Uh, between the mental and the physical is waning. We're constructing um, the environment in which we encounter them and we're not perceiving them objectively. Um, so that always has to be taken in consideration when encountering any being on the astral plane. The primary experience when you're shifting from a mental wandering to an astral wandering, and this is Barden's method, basically. You exteriorize your mental body from your physical body, and then you visualize your astral body standing before you, or pull it out of your physical body, make it stand before you, and you enter your astral body. Because <clears throat> otherwise, it's just sort of, without the mental body, it's just energy. Okay? It has no awareness, no consciousness itself. It's only when the mental body enjoins it that it becomes your astral body. You know, and then you're in your astral mental body and you're fit for wandering, um, fit for perceiving in the astral realm. So the, the main experience in that moment of transition is where all, it all comes alive. The energy in the body is immense and it's sensorial. It's all sensation. Everything is alive and aflame like a star. You know, that's why it's called the astral <laughs> because it's all radiating itself, its meaning, its significance is radiant. Um, and so that's why uh, Barden calls it the ecstasy and why, you know, it is called an ecstatic state. It's because of that energy and it's, it's like being on mushrooms or a being on acid. You know, basically everything is suddenly so alive. And the, that's the way the universe is at the astral level. Um, transitioning back to the physical, it's like everything is damped down. It's all passing through treacle. You know, it's, uh, yeah, it's all buffered and toned down. The volume is turned way down in the physical realm, as compared to the astral. Now, the mental realm, there's just no physical sensations at all. That's different, it's totally different. 
the mental realm, mental wandering, there's no physical sensation, period. There's perception alone. Perception without... <sighs> theoretically, perception without personalization. If you have, like I said before, gotten to know uh, the filters that you put up when you perceive and you can set them aside. You have to be able to do that to mental wander effectively at any rate. Um, so, all the energy we experience in the world, you know, is an astral perception. All the things we feel. Uh, I think that in the physical realm, the thing that is closest to how the body feels in the astral is when you're having an orgasm. Like when you're having a really good orgasm. That's what the astral body feels like. That's what the astral realm feels like. Everything is having a really good orgasm. And just like, ah, you know, releasing all of that energy. Um, it's nothing really mysterious or, um, yeah, it's just the astral realm. Not particularly any more important or significant than the physical realm or the mental realm. You know, it's just all part of existence. Um, I don't suggest becoming addicted to uh, astral travel. Um, I think most of the modern astral travel is essentially destructive, self-destructive. Um, it's very entertaining, you know, um, and but it's just completely subjective. Completely subjective. Most often what you are exploring is your own psyche. And it has a value there as psychotherapy, you know. Uh, it's, it can be, when it's guided, a good psychotherapy. But otherwise, it's delusion, you know. Um, and that takes us away from the objective reality, and that's destructive. Um, I mean, that's a good example of that in the extreme is the modern world. <laughs> this modern world is so far away from living in the objective reality um, that it is destroying itself. And that, that's the, the same sort of thing with the, you know, everybody astral traveling. Um, you've got to grow up First, you've got to truly be an adult first and know yourself before you get lost in these things. This is just child's play um, and ultimately self-destructive. At any rate, that's my little, little rant. I have to end all of these videos with a little rant, apparently. <laughs> So, um, I hope that helps you understand the astral a little more. It's a fun place to visit. All right. Till next time. Bye-bye.